This really is a crazy match. Uh, no doubt this has been highly anticipated here all, since we found out about it yesterday. Um, and uh, again, the winner of this still has that chance to go to Thailand on the line. And sure, a lot of people leaning towards Trademark probably, but TTE Esports, they've been looking really strong themselves lately, man. Uh, yeah, honestly, I, I've been surprised at how well they're performing in this event. They 2 0 Lions uh, yesterday handedly after being forced to forfeit over the weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. They're running really aggressive strategies, sort of just taking away from normal conventional laning like we're used to seeing it. So I really, I'm really just excited to see this matchup. Yeah, you know, with that said, again, uh, obviously a little bit late of a start here. They actually, as soon as he got online, they pretty much jumped right into it. So we're not going to delay this any further. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into the first game here, Trademark Esports. Taking on TT Esports in game number one here of this best set of three. So, as you can see, TDM on the Legion side, TT Esports on the Hellborn side. Um, again, wow, we're finally here. Again, this is an awesome, awesome series. I've really been, uh, can't, can't wait to, to really cast this match here. Um, obviously, the winner of this is going to be playing the winner of the Complexity Q Squad series. They've actually already started their first game. They're well into it, I believe. And, well, it looks like they might have even already finished. And I'll say Complexity. It looked like they were dominating in that one, game one, so. Yeah. Um, I think it's safe to assume complexity came out on top there, and so Q-Squad, a rough start for them, but. Yeah, one of the strongest drafts I've seen in a while, and they were actually on the Hellborn side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had the Keeper Tempest, I believe, amongst uh, mm -hmm. others, and mm -hmm. definitely seemed like it worked out well for them. Anyways, we got our match to worry about. We're already sure. into the banning phase. Let's take a look at what's going on here. The Blind Band's coming out. Uh, I, I joined a little bit late myself, but. So, actually, do you have the blind bounds on your screen? Yeah, I do. Uh, Fade and Deadwood coming out from Legion, just the, okay. the cheesy gankers. Probably Mass does not want to deal with them. And Moon Queen Tempest coming out from Hellborn. Uh, not really concerned with the Wild Soul. Wild Soul not even locked up, actually. So, yeah, not seeing him in this game. Interesting, oh, yeah. Nope. He's not banned yet in the normal banning phase. So I'll let you take over, though. Uh, how about that? I mean, one more ban to go over here from Leon Black, and... Unless he bans that Wild Soul here, we could possibly even see it picked up, maybe even passed it all together. Wouldn't that be absurd uh, with TT Esports versus Trademark Esports? But uh, um, the locking phase, also very interesting lock pool, by the way. We got Keeper of the Force into Gravekeeper Kinesis, followed up by Wretched Hag Torturer, and then Blood Hunter to, to throw things off at the end there. But, you know, Kinesis Gravekeeper, TT Esports specifically, you got Jeppins, you got Cheese Helmet. They are known to run those heroes, so I yeah. guess there's nothing too trollish by any means there. Well, the thing really quickly about those locks is to some teams they might be considered a troll lock because you hand it off to some players and they'll just be fumbling to even use the hero properly. Mm -hmm. In their hands, uh, a lot of those players consider those heroes to be very oh, viable, sure. even you know pretty high-tier hero picks. So they're troll locks, and they populate the, the lock pool troll locks, quote-unquote, but not really. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of those cases where it, it definitely it gives you an advantage of being able to play heroes that many teams may not be either used to or be able to play themselves. And when it comes to the lock stage, you know we see this uh, frequently actually from teams like this. So um, <laughs> let me go ahead and actually. Ooh. Okay, okay, so that disconnect right here. I noticed that, that that parasite first pick coming out from TDM and not even out of the lock pool. Uh, uh -huh. Just gets for free first pick there. Uh, a lot of very strong laner still available. Even a Wild Soul still in the pool, but I actually don't expect to see TTS pick up that Wild Soul. If anything, TDM might rely on it, but I actually expect TDM for, go, for more of a mid-paced team against TTS because they're really running sort of like the pain train, a lot of gank, a lot of adaptive lanes, yeah. uh, sort of in their style from what I've seen, almost manning up every single game with a dual lane or tri lane. Now, that being said, a defensive dual lane plus a parasite could be something that's very difficult to deal with, uh, seeing as how he's able to sort of have a lot of lane presence and level up very quickly at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact that us not, not seeing a Wild Soul, though, in a matchup like this, Trademark versus TT Esports, I was that that's got to be shocking man it really does but in the end it's it seems like that that may end up being the case here not I even would, touched I mean yeah I would put money on it not being picked <laughs> uh, yeah he is, he is a high tier hero but perhaps a little bit overstated uh definitely very very difficult to deal with definitely very cheesy but sometimes when you run those really aggressive teams uh the game sort of snowballs as we saw with uh Team Excellent versus, was it TTS? Oh, TT or, Sports, yeah. Yeah, yeah, where they just took over the game with their lanes and the lane control and the map control before Wild Soul could even grow. Yeah. And, you know, with that said, actually, of course, we did get to cover these guys in the first round and uh, against Team Excellent, as you mentioned. Yes! Um, in case you haven't noticed, as yeah, you see the Nomad pick coming out here 
from TTE Sports. But Terrell Fumador is obviously now a part of TTE Sports. He did officially join them, playing with them in this event, and I think he plans to play with them in a Haunt Tour, of course. But you're excited about the Nomad pick here, Emperor. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always, you know me, Breaky. Anything unconventional, I'm always all about. <laughs> Keeper of the Forest. Uh, not being looked at here, maybe because they know they haven't really been running the jungler. I mean, Jepin's uh, playing that Suicide Keeper, though, you can never really overlook. Still a very, very possible option. Uh, you know, I, I think that actually threw a wrench in their plans a tiny bit, but no, they're, they're going to go right on for it. I, I do I do like it. Obviously, they have one of the best Suicide Tree players out there. Uh, is Zai going to be playing? Huh. Zai going to be playing? Yes, he is. I see, I've see. i seen Zai practice this hero a lot. I've seen him practice the Gravekeeper pick a lot. Really? Damn, what an interesting game, though. Um, the Maraxis pick I also want to touch on, too. Right after they saw the Hammerstorm, uh, there, there's a fair amount of targeted abilities here, so probably going to be able to put his Arcane Shield to good use this game. Mm -hmm. Gravekeeper, I, I must say, I don't think I've honestly ever seen it here on Honcast, at least, in anyone else's hands but TTE Sports. So that's a little bit new for me, you know, seeing on Terran Terran Market, apparently, for you, though. You know, you say that Zai has actually been playing a little bit lately, maybe in scrims and whatnot, so... Um, he's definitely familiar with the hero, but it is a little bit odd for me uh, seeing it not in the hands of TTE Sports here instead of yeah. seeing it on Trademark. So. Well, if anything can be shown about this matchup, it's do not expect the conventional going on. Yeah. Uh, you already see from the lock pull itself, they were throwing things on tilt, expecting a different style of game. And yeah, when I saw that Gravekeeper pick, I was like, okay, it's not going to be in Cheese Helmet's hands, but you saw there was a Kinesis, a Gravekeeper, and a Bloodhunter, meaning we were going to see at least one of them come out here in the actual game. Mm -hmm. So I figured there was a very real chance of Zai playing that Gravekeeper. Yeah, uh, you do see, uh, <laughs> again, obviously a pause coming out right here. Uh, understandably, my nuts over there. He's a little bit, uh, a little bit frustrated at the circumstance. They, they have been waiting for basically the whole time and even longer. Um, and we're nice enough to, you know, allow for to wait even a little bit longer. But yeah. uh, it well, does. I, what's up? Oh, I understand Moravis though. He doesn't have his Han settings. He just got in the game. He 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 reinstalled Han, reinstalled Windows. Like he was trying to get here as fast as he could. Yeah. Uh, he got in the game. He's like, shoot, all my hockeys are off. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah. That's got to be uh, at the same time frustrating too. So. Uh, in the end, you know, quickly fix that, and uh, then we should be good to go on here in game number one. But you're right. I mean, especially with Trademark Esports, we're so used to seeing those quote-unquote conventional lineups. I mean, especially from them, let alone their opponents. But when you got TT Esports thrown in the wrench, this is a team that tends to obviously, you know, play a little bit different than a lot of teams when it comes to strategy and certain heroes. It's Trademark Esports, you know, trying to answer the call, you know, with that kind of unique, uh, unique lineup themselves mm -hmm. uh, coming out. So well, definitely excited to see. Yeah, definitely forced into it, though. I mean, once again, we saw the Gravekeeper, Kinesis, Bloodhunter. That's three out of the six heroes being a little bit different uh, pace in that lock pool. Sure. And given that they had second pick here on Hellborn, they were able to pick two of the conventional heroes, see Keeper of the Forest, see Torture, and, you know, make sure that they had to pick one of the more oddball ones out there for TDM. I'm definitely of the camp of people, and a lot of people disagree, but I think Gravekeeper is just a fine hero. Uh, definitely has more vulnerabilities. It's a little bit easier to gank, but has a lot of lane control potential, a lot of burst. Uh, and with that Hellflower late game, he can take down even 15, 1600, 1700, 1800 HP heroes even <laughs> very, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, his burst potential we have seen in, in you know, Chi Summit when he does play your particular esports. You've seen him even play more in that carry style of role, uh, trying to trying to bulk up, you know, be the top farmer and, and try, try to bring bring that to the table. So um, now with uh, with where where are we actually going to see Gravekeeper here? You're expecting the, the aggressive trial to come out from TDM, it looks like? From TDM with that Parasite, I wouldn't doubt it at all, especially Fitzky. When we used to run these kind of lineups at all, he'd always be pressuring for that aggressive tri-lane. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to comment, too, on the fact with the Hag and the, uh, the, the Wretched Hag and the Gravekeeper, one of the major things that's uh, really kind of a struggle for Nomad can be Hellflowers. Uh, obviously any hero, but Nomad really does rely on that mobility uh, for him to be, uh, you know, able to survive in those fights. So a health yeah. power pickup, we see two potential in carries able to grab them. Now and remember, I'm oh, sorry. Oh no, Dude. that's about it. Uh, well, remember, speaking of Nomad, we did actually see Tralfamador play Nomad against Team Excellent when we cast them in the first round, and that was uh, that was in that with the Wild Soul game where they even expected maybe to run against the Wild Soul, but they ended up jungling the Wild Soul anyways. Again, that didn't work out at all for Team Excellent, and and TD Esports kind of snowballed from there, but. The point being that obviously Trafalgar even very recently has played this Nomad hero, uh, even in this tournament. So, uh, going to be playing it again here, and we'll see where he ends up. You got Hammerstorm and Torture so far, kind of running up here. Right. Like they want to protect the ward spot at least, but. Well, okay. There's one thing I want to comment on here. We saw okay, Gravekeeper obviously went mid, uh, expecting. 
you know, maybe an easier matchup there. He's able to, like, first off, the hero is very level dependent. So when you send him in that aggressive lane, uh, yeah, he does well, but he's also very squishy. He can do well. We saw that actually TTS ran an aggressive Great Peeper Luna lane yesterday against uh, Lions. That being said, oh, Maraxis is actually, they're actually switching up all their lanes based on some early scouting. So, yeah. but we were going to see a Great Peeper middle. He's going to solo short. Uh, does have a lot of favorable matchups in that position. I think he'll do just fine against the Keeper of the Forest. He has a lot of harass he can put out. Uh, can't say I get to see that matchup often, though. Yeah, you know, that is kind of interesting, too, with TD Esports here, the fact that they are still suiciding the Keeper, even though they don't have another jungler on their side. And uh, But you obviously just value that Suicide Keeper here. Going to be played by Jeppins and going to the bottom lane. But as you said, it's definitely some switch-ups coming out. Wilds, or not Wild Soul, but Gravekeeper is down here. At the bottom lane, the creep wave a little bit disturbed, obviously, from the, from the tree dogs. But uh, in the end, Grief Keeper's here and should be able to pick up some decent CS. Uh, as Keeper of the Force actually all the way back at his tower as an archer joins him. And he'll kill it off right away. So, yeah, Parasite going into his own jungle. It ends up being the dual lane versus dual lane mid. How about this matchup? Moraxis Glacius versus a Nomad Aluna. Anything standing out to you about this matchup here? Well, A, when Nomad first came onto the scene, uh, not first came onto the scene, first got buffed again recently. Uh, maybe it was actually a couple months, but I was like, oh, damn, that looks strong. And I swear, in Team M games, for, for the next couple weeks, he was tearing things up. I've yeah. seen him taper off in popularity a lot since then, but I thought they wrote a lot of promise. What stands out to me, uh, more so, I always look at what's the jungler presence. And here in this case, they have Glacius Maraxis and a Parasite. Aluna has to be incredibly careful in her positioning, because, you know, one chain of disables, all Parasite needs to get a kill here. Nomad has no stun. Mm -hmm. He can do the Sandstorm, however, to save her, but if they have True Sight, whatever it is, Parasite can easily pick that up. Uh, the Luna has to be very, very careful because Nomad outside the Sandstorm cannot save her. Yeah, yeah, very, very true. And obviously there are no really defensive wards and that's it. nothing around Conger or anything, you know, try to prevent that flank from coming out. So uh, we'll see if my nuts here, of course, playing the Parasite takes advantage of that. Currently has a Catman champion, going to destroy it right there, though, and continue to farm for the time being. So no danger just yet in the middle lane with that said. Uh, but we are coming up to the two-minute mark here. Glacius going to head towards the top rune protection. Bottom rune is going to spawn, and Aluna gets there first. Parasite was heading over, but Aluna there just a little bit quicker. Actually, it happens to be Hastron was initially heading bottom. But, you know, with the Keeper of the Forest only being there, can't necessarily set up a kill effectively. So going to go back middle instead and maybe use it for more harassment. So uh, laning phase will continue as is. Very uh, very little harassment. Besides that, top lane, though, you do see a kill attempt being set up perhaps. Noob G needs to be careful here. How about this? Noob G ultimately playing the Suicide Wretched Hag. As a result of how these rolls were set up, he, he is going to be able to blink away right here just fine. Uh, but that is kind of interesting note to make there. Yeah, you know, in, in initially when we saw the lanes before they actually scouted, and that, that that just goes to show you the importance of early game scouting too, and how you know important it is to adapt your lanes based on your initial surveying. But this, uh, I thought Moraxis would be actually great against the Hammerstorm lane. I mean, Hammerstorm stun is very telltale to see coming, very easy to counter with the shield. But you know, they decide they did not want the Nomad to get free farm sitting there mid against the Gravekeeper or Hag. It's pretty much impossible to outlast hit him after that Wanderer buff. Oh yeah, uh, happened recently. So yeah, uh, I think it's okay. I mean, he's able to dodge the Hammerstorm stun fairly effectively up there. Uh, is able to get edged out by the torture. But so far, Zai knows how to move around the map. Mm -hmm. It's not surprising to see him be like, okay, I'm suffering in this lane. Uh, I have a lot of mobility on this hero. I'm just going to sneak over towards mid lane, blink in, and assist them for a kill. Yeah, exactly. So with Noob G playing this Suicide Hag, you kind of wonder if that, that same mentality is going to be there. I mean, obviously, it's still very early on in the game, but yeah. um, you can definitely, you know, when, when, a hero, when a player plays a certain role for so long, every single tournament match, and that hard carry, you know, farm lane role, obviously, uh, it, you, you tend to have that, that mentality for a different style. So. That that, that's a good point, and you know they are maybe thrown off a little bit out of the comfort zone. That being said, Noob G uh, obviously considered one of the best players in the game right now. Course, yeah. I'm sure he knows what they're doing, and as a captain, Minus is really good at sort of uh, telling his team where to be, what to be doing, and I'm sure he'll make those calls. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Minus, actually, uh, Ghost Marchers just picked up on Paris' side again. It, he he tends to be somewhat unique sometimes. It, it'd be pretty versatile in general with his jungle heroes. Uh, but he's going to go the Ghost Marchers route this time around over the, anything like the Steam Boots, perhaps. So this tends to lead more towards maybe even a Codex-style build here uh, coming out from his Parasite. So. Maybe. Just yeah. definitely screams for early game, uh, early game aggression more than anything as well. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that just yet. I mean, he has a Vulture oh. currently, so again, not really the ganking hero. I want to see him pick up, you know, maybe some dust soon and try to set up for a gank in middle. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have the highest mana pool at the moment. Does have a double damage rune, though. Um, 
he's he's got a chalice coming. No, just three mana potions. Okay. <laughs> I was he's like, that's insane farm. He does, he does. Top lane, Hammerstorm. Uh, I'm sure his farm, let's take a look at that. 24 and 14 is definitely up there with the best right now. Um, he's currently farming nearly 300 gold per minute. He is being surpassed, however, by both that Parasite, actually. So Parasite's farm is actually doing very good. On top of uh, on top of Gravekeeper, also doing very well here. Zai, pretty much uh, uh, Dominating in a sense. I mean, Keeper of the Force is also getting okay creep farm. 18 and 2 himself, so actually pretty solid. Yeah. But yeah, Zai is no doubt winning the lane down there. Right, I mean, he's out of time. regen now. He's trying to pull the lane, but he's pretty much out of options besides that. And I expected that with Gravekeeper's strong harass. Essentially a free harassing tool in that defiling touch. Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay with Parasite sort of playing passive right now and farming for the time being because of the fact that they have a dual lane and a dual lane setup. If he's able to just really quickly farm up, he's going to be out leveling at least one of the supports there, especially the Aluna. Not just a leveling one, but just uh, you know, increasing that golden experience total that much more if all the lanes are able to hold on. And we see here, Wretched Hag is still getting levels. Yeah. The Parasite does have that rev on him. He he was attempting to set up a gank on the Keeper of the Force right here, but Keeper was all the way back in his tower. Either he spotted something coming, or he just simply was happening to be doing the creep pull at that time and was just sitting at the tower as, as a result of that. So not able to be successful with the gank right there, but here we go again. Another Wild Hunter picked up, of course, and... Again, still has that rev on him. Will he go middle? Will he go bottom? He'll go neither. It's just not going to work out, so he'll just go back into the jungle. Okay, there is actually the other Wild Hunter here. That was still the first one, so uh, he can still take over that second one here in the near future and try to set up that gank. Uh, but still, we're now over six minutes into this game. No Bloodlust kill happening just yet. For the most part, heroes just staying in their lanes. Very little to no movement going on, uh, even with that Parasite, who, of course, has attempted a couple times, but unsuccessful, as we're talking about, so... Pretty yeah, game right I, now. yeah, on paper it looks like Nomad could be set up to have like a really, really fun time in this game. There are like pretty much four pseudo squishy targets there. Uh, obviously there's Maraxis who's quite tanky, but I mean this yeah. looks like the kind of game where if Nomad gets a sound start, he's gonna be three hitting heroes left and right. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know Trout, and again, the last time we saw it, he starts as, you know, going for that earlier Helm of the Black Legion, kind of building somewhat <laughs> tanky early on, but then, yeah. you know, good damage after that, of course, so. Well, Kind of yeah. expect that here. He does a lot of damage with that Wanderer, with the, uh, the Mirage Strike ability, even even in spite of a lack of damage items, so to speak, early on. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the Actually, Parasite coming in. Yeah, Parasite, the Wild Hunter that we talked about. He still has a face hug ready to go, running around in the sand The Haster going to be used by Nomad right there, and the gank attempt will be foiled in the end. The Aluna stun causing issues, too. Yeah, a little bit. I don't understand. I thought he could lay down that ward and just quickly stolen it. Um, I guess edge counter. Yeah, he's not level six yet for Nomad. That's true. Not yeah. Edge counter. He could have stolen that haste rune too. Uh, probably just figuring they weren't able to get into range with the other two follow up heroes. Ooh, also look, keeper of the forest was positioning mm -hmm. himself. Uh, pretty good decision across the board then, not to risk it. They're winning in the experience game right now, uh, doing quite well in gold as well. No reason to take unsafe plays. Go for the safe ganks. Uh, keeper was in animation of the root right there, but he decided to cancel it. Just figured they didn't have enough burst damage on Moraxis, especially with him having that matrix and uh, able to uh, able to survive. So again, we're now eight minutes in. Still no bloodless kill. Action is definitely picking up. Could pick up a little bit more right here. Parasite going for the region. We'll pick it up first. Not the biggest deal in the world. Going to use that leech stone. Chasing out a Luna. The face up coming out, but the nature's veil applied. It was stolen, however. Does he have another nature's veil in time? Yes, he does. Oh, a Luna will survive for the time being. And now Parasite might be the one in trouble. No, he put the rev down. He still had the rev on him, actually. And he does get the bloodless kill on a Luna. So finally, finally, we see a bloodless kill. Good chase uh, by my nuts, my nuts right there. Yeah, that was huge. Uh, Jeffins did not want to try to use that ulti. I mean, I think he could have if he used it soon enough. Um, one thing to be careful of, though, he didn't want to use it early because if he used it early, Parasite has that face hug ability. We've talked about how you can transfer debuffs with it. He could have, yeah. oh, meanwhile, hack on top lane, getting jumped, barely blinks out to survive. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. That's fine. And anyway, um, I was saying that face hug obviously transfers the debuffs. He can take that, uh, the root ability, just you know, transfer right onto the Aluna and get the kill so easily. So Jeppins was smart in holding onto it. Yeah, yeah. It's a, there's there's a very little, if any, window really to use the ultimate. So um, definitely not the biggest deal in the world. But Bloodlust kill again in favor of Parasite. Uh, his gold per minute con continuing to be now around the 300 gold per minute mark. Actually, now working on his, uh, his Blood Chalice, it looks like. Granted, he has 1,100 gold saved up, actually. So definitely has enough gold for it already. There's a Scarab purchase right as I say that. And apparently more boots. <laughs> He goes ahead and sells those, though, realizing that he already has Ghost Marchers, and now he picks up a Soul Scream Ring, actually. So, yeah. going the Energizer here. 
Yeah, uh, I've seen this out of my nuts sometimes. It means yeah. he obviously goes a lot of situational builds on the hero. Uh, in a case like this, I've, I've seen even Energizer Shrunken Head uh, before. You don't consider it a lot, but... Nice edge counter right there coming out. It does set up the kill on a Glacius. Uh, he used the edge counter as, as they were initiating on him after the Glacial Freeze. And uh, set up the counter kill, so well played right there from the team. Obviously, the supporting cast also being there. Wretched Act going for the top route. It is, it is going to spawn. Happens to be an invis that will be bottled up by Nomad right there. Uh, but, yeah, the first kill now coming up for TT Esports. As look at that purchase. Cheese Summit playing the carry Hammerstorm here, going the Alchemist Bones route. Yeah, uh, I do like it. I mean, Al uh, Hammerstorm has the ability. <sighs> look at Zai there, man. Yeah. Just blowing up Leon Black. Got the tail into that. Yeah, no, I mean, that's Gravekeeper for you, though. Sort of has that Deadwood effect, sort of has that Pebbles effect where you catch a hero off on a Swift Blade effect, even. You catch a hero off on his own, that ulti did way too much damage. Mm -hmm. um, especially for a squishy support hero. Uh, we were saying, though... Hammerstorm. Hammerstorm, Hammerstorm. Yeah, obviously has the huge ability to snowball. And, you know, yeah, I like a Hammerstorm carry, but I only like a Hammerstorm carry when he's not the only one you're depending on. And obviously in this game, he has a Nomad to bank on as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just fine. Yeah, so going the Yaku Bones. I know we've seen, uh, you know, when B-Kid was playing this hero from time to time, for, and he still does definitely, but uh, he was, and he's known for going the Yaku Bones, uh, uh, from what I recall, so he definitely can make it work here. Obviously, it, around the 10-minute mark or so, 10 and a half minutes, so maybe a little bit later, but you talked about that. It's not necessarily the biggest deal in the world. Uh, that he got that later on. Glacius in the meantime in the middle lane wants to get a lot of damage coming out. Sandstorm is going to be used down. He goes more axes, finishes off torture though in return. So one for one exchange right there. Edge counter is up for Nomad. We'll see if we can bait out something, but Moraxis is obviously too smart for that. And he'll be fine. So they take out each other's supports right there. And, and uh, Moraxis will have to fall back. Keep of the forest in the meantime. He's in trouble actually. Rev goes down. There's the leech. There's a the face hug. Gonna steal that Nature's Bell. Nature's Bell coming back up though. He's out of the ref range. Will he get it off in time? No, it doesn't matter. Another rev is down. And the auto attack for the kill. How about that? I mean, investing in these Ward of Revelations, but they are paying off here. I mean, oh yeah, any kill you can get obviously pays back dividends. On top of the experience you're getting, uh, Minots, as we know, just does an excellent job of playing Parasite. Excellent job moving around the map. And, you know, there's not too much really Keeper can do in that situation. I, just, I mentioned it before, but against Parasite, Keeper has a really, really hard time just because of the nature of that base hub transferring the debuffs. Yeah. Um, Top lane, we see Wretched Hag actually sitting in there. Does he? Does Torture? No. I mean, he's trying to scout it out. It almost, I thought he was actually going to change reactions right there. <laughs> yeah, that could have been is. really... Oh, and he's out. Yeah. Doesn't so, he yeah. have boots yet, by the way, on Hag. <laughs> he's struggling. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't really blame him. He's in a really, really tough situation up there. Did go to the bottle for a little bit of sustained regen. Yeah. At least he's level 6 now, so he can you know, kind of have an impact on this game. If he's able to rotate, they've got the stunners, they've got the action. So is it, safe, like to, to... Is it safe to say the Alchemist Bones were out here for Hammer Storm? Don't expect him to go the Portal Key now? Go no, else. It's, you can still go Portal Key. He might go the Shrunken Head route, but you can still go Portal Key, or you might go Power Farm. There's nothing wrong with it. This is just like late game insurance. Yeah. There's pretty much no way for his farm to taper off at this point. Um, you know, what route they'll decide remains to be seen, but with all the squishy heroes there on Legion, it, it wouldn't be surprising. Yeah. Yeah, again, it's it leaning more towards the, you go Alki Bones, you're pretty much just making a commitment to, uh, I want to I wanna farm, obviously, and Portal Key is kind of against that, but at the same time, you know, setting up some aggressive kills, uh, that, that in a sense is farming, so. Yeah, and another yeah, like aspect that. of Portal Key, too, is it allows you to split push very effectively if you're left alone to farm a lane. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have a Portal Key, you're very, very vulnerable to people mass teleporting in, and then if they have Portal Keys chasing you down and killing you, yeah. when you have a Portal Key, if you see those TPs, you just blink yourself and get right on out of there. Yeah. Well, uh, is just free farming at the top lane. I mean, obviously the Legion team not really too concerned about that. He has overtaken once again as the top farm of the game. 390 gold per minute now. And again, kind of kind of expected with that Alchemist Bones here. Speaking of portal key, though, how about Zai on Gravekeeper? He already got his portal key. He, too, is having a great farming game here. Has a major totem on him to emulate, or excuse me, a Grave Locket, Steam Boots, and that portal key. He's also level 11, by the way. Uh, he can almost pick. He could probably pick up anyone in the game right now if he gets that good jump on them with that ultimate. Uh, right now, yeah, so. you know he definitely can. With level four of that corpse explosion, level two ulti definitely, definitely. Right can. as I say, that he's gonna go in right here. Luna's gonna fall in the meantime. Torture after the second chain reaction. Needs to worry about surviving though. But Parasite using that that uh, the energizer. However, ports are coming in. Keep it the force and the Legion team. Trademark esports. They spread out big time, realizing they they weren't gonna be able to fight too much longer. There's the arcane shield coming into play. You mentioned that, especially against the Hammer Storm. Very effective tool. 
and Limp will be more than fine as a result. So the counter coming from TTE Sports, not able to get any counter kills, though. Yeah, you know, Moravis doing a great job there, sort of juking around in fog. The thing about that Gravekeeper ultimate as well is once you get level 2, level 3, the cooldown really does drop down significantly. Oh, 60 yeah. seconds for what is an insanely damaging ultimate at level 3. I think they just uh, they, they buffed that fairly recently. It used to be, I think, 80 yeah, a few seconds. Months, a few months, I think. But yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Dropping to the 60, so... Yeah, quite uh, quite the impact. Yeah, you're right. A minute cooldown at level 3 ultimate. That's pretty ridiculous. Middle tower going down, by the way. In favor of TT Esports, so getting some gold as a team right there. And Hammerstorm, 2,600 gold now pulled up, so he's definitely uh, saving up quite a bit. Nomad still trying to finish off his home of the Black Legion. Trophimodor's farm, it seems like it's been kind of up and down here. He's at 270 right now, definitely respectable. Uh, yeah. But again, still trying to finish that helm. So. Well, we might see like the Shrunken had the Elder Parasite route. And I wouldn't be too surprised if we yep. uh, saw that coming from him as well. Oh, Parasite getting caught in the jungle. Can he jump into creeps? No, he cannot because they were killed off anyways. So even if he had timing right there, probably still would have died. Aluna's getting picked off in the meantime, though, as Zai gets some revenge for his teammate right there and takes him out. Nomad chasing down Regidag in the meantime. Has a blink up in seven seconds. Not even close to coming off cooldown. <laughs> Kills happening all over the place all of a sudden. Yeah, two for one in favor of TTS, though. And they're, they're still looking pretty strong in this game. Nomad right about to hit level 10. Uh, definitely... You know, beginning to get into the full momentum of this mid game here. No, this is where Nomad shines, honestly. He just does so much damage. Yeah. Uh, Helm the Black Legion obtained, allow him to hopefully survive here. No health flowers on the map yet. And, you know, that's the thing about Nomad, though. You get one kill, the Mirage Strike resets itself, and you can just keep on using it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, yeah. It, it, when you. Uh, I, I never knew that actually for the longest time until we, we finally saw him compared to the play, and that was brought up. But, like, holy crap, that is that's pretty damn powerful. <laughs> No, that's that's yeah. Just why? That's why you see Nomad just like home to so many hat tricks and mm -hmm. fights. You're like, what? How does he still have that? And yeah, it resets oh, itself. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, Pointing to the middle lane with a couple of uh, support right here. He'll just clean up the creep wave as TDM falls back. So no fights are going to be coming to that again. Noob G here, not to pick on him by any means, but he does continue to struggle. Only 113 gold per minute. He does have his boots at least. Trying to finish those steam boots. But is having a tough time. Axis, however, having a better time. Limp does have his own portal key here. And actually going to try to triple stack the Ancients. Will be successful. It's very close right there. But he does get it. So I'm sure we'll see maybe even that Wretched Hag try to go over there. Help with the cleaning those up at least. Get some more farm. Gravekeeper continues his streak though. Takes out Leon Black. He's taken him out several times. You see he's now owning him. Uh, Zai is 4-0-1 here. So Zai, he knows how to play the Gravekeeper apparently. Well, yeah, and he, he got the solo role, he got the early levels, and now he's ahead of the curve uh, very much. So I think he's the, oh, he's not the highest, not above Hammerstorm, obviously, but definitely the highest level in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what Gravekeeper needs. Um, we see here, he's going for the tablet, I do approve, but afterwards, I'm curious to see whether he's to go for the Hellflower route or the Shrunken Head. Uh, the only reason I could say going Shrunken Head instead of Hellflower with this game is only because Wretched Hag isn't having the game for life either. Yeah. You might need to just have a little bit more uh, sustainability in these fights. But that Hellflower, I stressed before, I think is going to be... Uh, oh, imperative. bottom lane. They're going to the key with the Force. Hammerstorm got stunned in the process, though, despite being invis. But now they're looking to turn around. Paris, that would take up the creep, however. Oh, that was just unfortunate positioning for Cheese Summer right there. They were definitely setting up that bait. But because he was nearby, he gets caught. Nice job of the ultimate from uh, from Nomad coming over there with the edge counter. However, Hammerstorm will fall, and it's not going to matter in the end. Nomad looks like he's also going to drop as Trademark Esports makes it a three for nothing exchange in total right there. Oh, again, the, Hammerstorm was in Viz right next to Keeper. Again, they were almost planning that. But because he was right next to Keeper, the Quake stun stunned them both, and he wasn't able to save him in time. Yeah, that, that was that was really rough. Nomad almost picked up a couple kills there on Parasite and Onward, but just excellent kiting coming out. Meanwhile, a counter kill onto the Wretched Hag here. I don't think he'll be able to get away. Mm, yeah, Blink still not a cool. He only has the level one of the Flash of Darkness, so uh, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long, long cooldown. Twelve seconds instead of what could be six seconds. So he's not able to use that rapidly as we're so used to seeing. So again, struggling, struggling here for TDM. But his team overall is having the better time against TTE Sports, and that's what matters, right? So. That is yep. the good news for them. But, yeah, you were talking about, okay, so the possibility of Shrunken Head maybe on Gravekeeper or what route he would be going because of how the Wretched Act's struggling. Uh, did he actually purchase the tablet? I mean, I kind of feel like he's been sitting on those items for a while. A oh, top lane, by the way. Moraxis picks off Torture. Hammerstorm coming in. Might not be able to get there close enough, though. It doesn't look like it. Hammerstorm will be fine in the end. But uh, it does look like, okay, Gravekeeper does finish the tablet command here, so. He did have that in the works. 
Now again, curious to see if he goes maybe for that shrunken head or that health flower. It's just it's all for the stats and an extra escape mechanism after he jumps in, just so he's not free food. You know, afterwards, he is pretty fragile still. He does need a little bit of reinforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a good route to go. But yeah, I mean, you know what? With Maraxis potentially getting a health flower as well, I honestly think I would like to see the shrunken head. Yeah. All right. So we'll see again what Zai decides to ultimately go for. Middle lane, Nomad's in a lot of trouble right here. Tralfamador may get caught out. He will definitely. Holy crap. I mean, he went from half to nothing right there. From uh, from that Gravekeeper, again, shows you the damage output of, an, of it, the ultimate on top of that Corpse Explosion. Obviously, yeah. Maraxxus leading the way. Just got caught out in the middle lane. Well, I thought this game was looking very, very nice for TTS up until that bottom fight where both Hammerstorm and Nomad died in a very close engagement. Uh, look at that, man. They're just unrelentless now. Yeah. They're just keeping it up. Now he does have a root right here. He's going to get off a pretty good root, it looks like. There's the Parasite using the Infesta. More Axis made up falling, but Parasite going for the counter kill. Gravekeeper, of course, joining the party. No ports coming in just yet. Torturer will go down. And Keeper of the Force kind of just holding his ground. He is going to survive, but again, the Porsche is not able to get there in time. And they end up dying. Meanwhile, at the top lane, they did port to the top side here. Nomad and Hammerstorm are chasing Kalatius. He's going to be the sacrificial lamb for Trademark Esports right there. As the tower does fall, though, so... You can almost say that was a that was a plus right there. It distracted them to get a kill into Glacius, but they got the tower kill on top of it. So mm -hmm. worked out not too shabby there. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, he's farming back now. He did get a shrunken head now. So at this point, Elder Parasite or Portal Key are the only two routes he should basically go, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, if he wants to contribute, try to hope that you know maybe Legion team puts themselves in a little bit of a bad position. Keeper root is enough to hold them in lockdown, and he doesn't need the Portal Key. Then yeah, sure, get it. But otherwise, uh, do pick that up. I think Elder Parasite would be okay, though. They're a little bit behind now. I think they need a little bit more, like, sort of burst momentum. I would go for it, but definitely PK after. Yeah. So Zai answers the question a little bit. It's going to be neither, though. See, he picks up a Blessed Orb, so... Sheepstick, I yeah, guess. Yeah, usually it's a Sheepstick in this case. Yeah. Um, so just another source. I mean, it's going to give him a lot more stats, another source of lockdown, uh, similar to the Hellflower on the Nomad. Mm -hmm. but, okay, I can see it. <laughs> it's good. It is yeah, a it's like, it, it's, it is a lot similar to the Hellflower route. It's yeah. something that gives him more stats. Sheepstick is pretty damn good. Um, I also saw, what else did I see? Was Nomad maybe? No, he's actually still sitting on the same items, but... Oh, yeah, that's with the Codex, man, about was, to kill yeah. bot. Yep, going for the kill. The chain reactions comes out. It doesn't matter. The red Aluna stun coming. Again, just not in time. Nomad gonna follow. Takes over the creep, though. Parasite is on the run. Sandstorm going to be used. Parasite now is in trouble. The Hammerstorm stun comes out, and he finally will fall. So it ends up being a one-for-one one right there. Good pursuit from TTE Sports, and they're going to definitely heavily pressure this bottom tower now. Probably get a free tower kill out of this as well. So definitely a decent momentum swing here for TTE Sports. However, trademark eSports, they're going to trade the middle tower in the process. So in, the same, in that sense, you know, not the bit, not as big of a deal, obviously. You know, overall a favorable trade as long as they're able to rotate to middle here and make something happen. Uh, yeah, Parasite for Torture, definitely not worth it given that Parasite's level 14 still. He's keeping active, he's keeping him on their feet. I do like that. Wretched Hack actually with the double damage rune right here. She's sitting on a couple of Apprentice robes. Definitely uh, going eventually to the help bar. Keeper the Force Root coming in. Where's the follow-up, though? Hits a great root right there. Doesn't have the most. Now, they will kill Wretched Hack in the process. So, didn't even need the follow-up, apparently. Just him and Torture uh, were enough to at least get the one kill. The chase is still on. Can they get Frosty the Snowman here? I think they probably will be able to. He doesn't oh, even yeah. have a TP. He has red boots. Oh. That is it. No, Keeper turns around. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Not just maybe a little it. bit afraid. Zai does still have his ultimate up. He was in position. They just wanted to say, hey, you know what? This was a good exchange for us. I mentioned uh, it was overall more favorable for TTS, and especially if they rotated to mid and made something happen. Yeah. Uh, that they did. Still slowing down Hag's progress. Looking like she's not going to get help flower anytime soon. Uh, I do like what TTS is doing, and we still see the Alchemist Bones and the Hammerstorm effect on this team. Yeah. I mean, uh, got him farming 400 gold per minute. That's... Very good, obviously. So. Yeah, a, a little bit behind in experience, not that much behind in gold. In the experience law, you contribute that to the fact that, you know, T TDM does have that jungler. Yeah. Spreading it out a lot more, so. Paying off for them there. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the same time, Gravekeeper is actually close to level 16, I'm sure. And as we stress, that ultimate cooldown going all the way down from 100 to 60 seconds now at level 3. 
Um, so only a minute cooldown definitely can use it a lot more frequently, obviously. So, But the yeah. portal key pickup on Jeppins here on the Keeper of the Forest, obviously proving to be a good pickup there. Uh, good for the initiation of the team. The broadsword right. on Nomad. So Looking most at the likely uh, assassin. assassin. Yeah. Yep, yeah. It's a very good item for him. Obviously, that Wanderer, when combined with the Assassin Shroud, you know, bonus backstab damage, just tons yeah. and tons of work. Uh, huge snowball factor there. Yeah, the portal key for Keeper, we talked about it before. It's more important because of the fact that they're running two melee carries who just really do depend on the lockdown from their teammates to get anything done. Uh, I'm keeping my eye on Hammerstorm here. I don't think he's going to go Bulwark. I mean, every time I see him play this carry Hammerstorm with Alchemist Bones, I don't really see him rush that after the Shrunken Head. I am leaning on the the other parasite, but we'll have to see. It might be a PK. He is right. going back to base right now. Yeah. It, to me, it's, if you're going elder, why not at least get the hungry spirit? But yeah, because he was farming with it. So and PK difference. for the initiation with keeper would be strong. Just, it could go. Okay, okay, he does go to the PK. Yeah. Elder will come up next. We were debating back and forth, and there he goes. He goes with the portal key, as you talked about the synergy definitely I'm, there with the keeper. Yeah, I'm a portal key fan, definitely yeah. on him. I mean, even before shrunken head, so. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with that. even yeah, even if you're playing more of the hard hitting. Oh well, Hammerstrom's always a hard hitter, really. But even if you're playing more of the, the farming role, the carry role, definitely that portal key route. It's 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 great on any hero in the sense of being that melee, that brute strength melee. Hence his ultimate name, obviously. But uh, just being able to get in that you know, close enough to obviously his team, his enemies, and you know pound in that damage is always a good thing. So. Yeah, uh, and the thing is, too, they don't really have an answer right away to his shrunken head. And if he, you know, when with health flowers eventually coming up here and an ultimate sheep stick, if he doesn't have that portal key, he risks getting initiated on and disabled before he's even able to get his shrunken head off. Now that he can portal key in, uh, that sort of threat is removed. And they once he act activates his shrunken head, they can't really do anything about it. If they sort of scatter, clump up, trying to react to it, that's when Keeper of the Force can come in and make things happen. <laughs> Speaking of Keeper right there, he actually steals the double damage ring right in front of Moraxis who is attempting to bottle it up, so crafty play coming up from Jeppins there, but as a speaking of Keeper, Bound Eye just picked up on Parasite, by the way, so my nuts here uh, definitely give us a good vision for the team, not only for, of course, Keeper and his uh, his nature's veil, but obviously the whole ward situation, too, so and, well, hell, there's a Sandstorm, obviously, on top of that uh, from Nomad, so many reasons to have that Bound Eye, and why it's a very efficient pickup here for uh, for Trademark Esports. Nomad, Dralfmador, don't overstay your welcome, buddy. <laughs> He is going to fall back, as you see, all of Trademark Esports, they were definitely looking to collapse on him, but plays it safe. And, and yeah, I mean, the goal lead right now, it's only 2,500 goal lead 27 minutes in. It's This this is nothing. I mean, uh, according to the team stats, this really isn't overwhelming by any means. Uh, 6,000 experience lead, obviously a little bit more, but nonetheless, we, we definitely still got quite the game here. Uh, maybe slightly in the favor of Trademark Esports. Again, Grave Gear really in the way. Still not level 16 just yet. Hasn't managed to get that cooldown level 3, or his ultimate level 3. Yep. Okay, well, there you go. There he, Now he has it. And they're going to push this bottom tower. It's already taken plenty of damage. Will TT Esports defend it, actually? Looks like they always want to. Nope. Okay. It dies in front of their face. <laughs> Oops. <sighs> oh, the parasite in the ballista, man. It's hard to deal with. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Very hard to deny. Still, they're... Uh, honestly, I... Yeah, a little bit in favor of TDM. They do have that bound eye, of course, with map control. You know, I stressed yesterday how important I think that bound eye pickup is. I think it's a little bit overpowered even uh, right now. I really do stress on almost every team that begins to take advantage of map control. You, you do need it. Oh, look at this advancement. Oh, they want to go in. The Golden Hammer Storm comes out. Stun of the Kalashias. He's going to fall root in the background coming out. Morax is with that Matrix. He's taking plenty of damage, though. And Morax as well end up exploding. Path Blast hitting several heroes right there. But TT Esports, all the momentum right now. Keeper of the Force did get picked off, by the way. Yes, see the zombie apocalypse is out from Gravekeeper. A two for one, though, coming out for TT Esports. So definitely a fight one right there. And back to farm we go. So yeah, they were they were looking to pursue big time. The Galvanize hit all of his teammates, so good coordination there. Good coordination, and we talked about before, they don't really have an answer to that Shrunken Head Hammerstorm. Moraxis came in, he already had a Shrunken Head activated on a Hammerstorm. Uh, he activated the shield, but quickly got just beat down. The Matrax unable to do any damage. Yeah. Choosing not to go with the Helm of the Black Legion next after the Portakey, which you definitely see sometimes in Moraxis. Instead, just trying to go straight to that Hellflower, so right, not as tanky. But. Well, yeah, but they need the initiation advantage really hard right now if they're going to be being this Hellborn team, because mm -hmm. Nomad and Hammerstorm combined are huge, huge beasts right now, especially Hammerstorm sitting on 428 GPM. If he doesn't really get that strong initiation off, they're not really going to come ahead in this fight. You talked about the Elder Parasite possibility. I mean, he has the gold for it now, so... 
Yeah, we'll, well maybe we'll see the Bulwark. I like the Elder Parasite because it increases your damage a lot more than just a Bulwark does. Yeah, Bulwark is more of a team item. It would synergize with the Nomad. Yeah. So not a horrible pickup, but I just feel like it's not only the, the increased damage, it's like you don't get kited as easily anymore either once you pick up the Elder Parasite. Mm -hmm. And in synergy with the Galvanize, you're pretty much moving at 522. Yeah, it's it, yeah. I mean, they both obviously have their benefits in the end. You talked about the Souls Bulwark. It, it does synergize very well yeah. with the Nomad on your team, especially, and yeah, it's going to go the Souls yeah. Bulwark route. So, uh, I definitely see what you're saying, though. Um, but in the That's... end, going that route, of course, attack speed, obviously. Well, I guess all the press it definitely brings that too. But once you upgrade it to the Demonic, having that warp left in there. Well, yeah, I would, I would just rather see the Bulwark on a hero like Keeper and let your hammer get Elder Paris. I think I think they're in a really good spot right now to take these fights. Mm -hmm. So that's why and Keeper's almost sitting at 2,000 gold. It is a solid pickup for him as well. But, uh oh, um, Aluna going a little bit too far by herself. And <laughs> Keeper kind of he jumps over. He's like, eh, not much more I can do for you, buddy. So Leon Black falls right there. He's going to be down for 30 seconds. This top tower, it's a 5 versus 4 right now, of course, in favor of Trademark, and they should definitely get a free tower kill here. No point to fight tower. it for TTE Sports. So, uh, obviously setting up in their base, and by the time it perhaps action happens up here, Luna should be up. I don't think Trademark Esports is going to force anything, though, by any means. Trial from door on Nomad in the meantime. He's at the bottom lane. By the way, he has his Assassin Shot finished. I haven't been focusing too much on him lately. Uh, a lot on Hammerstorm, of course, for obvious reasons. But he's farming 320 gold per minute, and... You know, coming along pretty nicely here is uh, Gravekeeper also, for that matter, getting very close to that Sheepstick. All-important Sheepstick here. Yep. Uh, speaking about anti-cutting, too, they do have the Nomad to rely on with that Sandstorm ability. It does also give move speed to your allies, so... I, I think it applies even when he's in Shrunken Head. Most positive buffs do. True. Yeah, I, I believe it does, yeah. I, I don't know what I'm saying. I have no clue. <laughs> but I would think it does, so... It's not something I have to look at too often. It's not often we see a Nomad these days anyway, but exactly. yeah, I'm pretty sure. Sheepstick is finished on Zai. Mm -hmm. Huge. Hellflower about to be finished on Raxus. Hellflower about to be finished on Wretched Hag. Yeah. This is their time. Th yeah, th this is the time of uh, all right, Trademark Esports. We got our items. We are ready to now take over the game. No doubt it is. There's the Sheepstick officially purchased. Yeah. Wretched Hag. And everything else is right here. There's the Hellflowers. Yep. Does Raxus um, have his? Yeah, he does. He does. And I speak about a team's okay. window uh, all the time where this is when your lineup is strongest relative to the enemy teams. This is when they have everything in their favor. This is when they want to fight. You, got, you also got Parasite, who's level 17. Obviously, you saw the level 3 face suck on top of everything else, having that 4-second silence and the extra burst damage. Yeah, this is definitely good timing here for uh, Trademark Esports. The question is, you know, what do they do? Where, where do they go here now? I mean, you see right here on the map, uh, they, are, they are still completely spread out. For, for the time being, they're, they're still going to continue to farm. Um, I, are you concerned with that? Do you want them to kind of force the issue here? Or? They, they need the vision to make the initiation happen. Whoever does get the initiation off, I do. Uh, I mean, you can say that with any fight, really. But yeah. given the fact that there's two Hellflowers and a Sheepstick, uh, you can see why it would be pretty critical in this fight. Uh, they, they do need to get the jump on them. So they, they should be patient, but they should be proactive. Yeah. I think Nomad realizing here at the top lane that there's a rev down because uh, he went in to jump into Wretched Act with the Assassin's Shot. She blinked away as soon as he got nearby, so... He's probably like, yeah, there's some uh, there's some detection here. A lot of ports coming in, too. And smartly, TTE Sports is falling back as a team. A couple of them, so. Yeah. So when I talked about Hellflower earlier, the obvious answer for Nomad was going to be Shrunken Head. I was curious when he was going to be picking it up in this game. Oh, hold that thought for a second. Gravekeeper at the bottom lane. The room coming out. Hammerstorm charges in with a brute. Like, look at that damage output. Oh, he gets tabbed over. He didn't stun. Why did you stun? <laughs> What? Jeez, Helmet, what were you Dude, doing? Come on. Oh, that's that's There's, silly. Mm, that's a mm, free 100% huge kill, and he didn't stun. God yeah, no what. buyback. That's a Congor opportunity right there, man. No buyback. He just got the hell of the sheep stick. How do you not stun his Hammerstorm? <laughs> I'm baffled by that. I think maybe if there was follow-up coming or otherwise, he just saw that he was dying in two hits. He's like, yeah, man, check out my muscles. Yeah. I got this. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. That that, that really sucks. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we know in a normal, any given day, he would typically stun. Just, you know, at the moment, he probably just thought he didn't need to. Zai, uh, you, I'm sorry. You got to give credit to Zai, too. I mean, oh. he positioned himself appropriately in a perfect tablet over the ledge. Yeah, not that. The sheep stick follow up, the, the tablet escape over, and then at the very last second, after Cle Keeper blinked and was going to interrupt, the, he, he got the PK off just as Keeper blinked. Yeah. Honestly, it was masterful. Uh, 
you know, part of why people give Zai so much credit. I mean, even under these tense situations, intense composure. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, it's, it's moments like that where at the end of this game, you know, we may look back and go, well, yeah, that was a missed opportunity. Could have been a big, like you said, that could have opened up Congor possibly. There was definitely no buyback on him. I mean, that could have definitely been a big momentum push. But what's done is done. The game moves on, of course. Yeah, in the end, you can't let that face you too much. As you do have Trademark Esports now pushing into your secondary tower here in the middle lane. Both teams are ready to fight, it looks like. Nomad's now level 16 as well, by the way. So that's that level 3 edge counter. Makes that. So oh. we got a short cooldown. There's no 30 second cooldown on that. But Oh no, Elder Parasite is only 50 gold off of completion. That is oh. such a big thing for his DPS in a fight. It is, yeah. Help me, he's able to get it. Go kill a small camp. There's nothing <laughs> in range. That sucks. The Alchemist bones up in five seconds, actually. Oh, here we call them. Raxis jumps in. Keep the force of the quick encounter. They're going to go for Wretched Egg. Wretched Egg. Well, now she blinks away at the last second. The Shapeshift comes out. Hammerstorm didn't use the shotgun hit before. He finally gets it off. He's going to finish up Gravekeeper. He will kill Gravekeeper, but he dies in the process. Torture and Nomad still alive, though. Parasite on the run. Moraxis jumps back in. Torture will fall. Nomad going for the kill. The nice edge counter right there. Going for the kill on Glacius. All the freeze at the last second. The Sandstorm comes out, but it doesn't matter. Down goes Nomad. Keeper of the Force. Not even here. I believe he's didn't, but yeah, no buybacks there. Uh, jeez. <laughs> Ricky, do you realize how huge that last second like, freeze was? Yeah. I mean, okay, if he killed that Glacius, what would happen? His, uh, his uh, Rosh could down. get reset, he would be able to kill the Moraxis. That last second freeze from Fitzgy right there, so clutch. Yeah. I mean, luckily had the cooldown up, luckily landed it. It was, I mean, and skillfully. It was just so huge. And then, I don't know, man, I, I hate to keep picking on it, but Heimer again, that fight, without the shrunken head activation... What's going on? Yeah. You're blinking in, you know they have the sheeps, you know they have the health flowers. And speak of that, imagine if he got his shrunken head off, a different fight. Imagine if he got his shrunken head off and had an elder parasite there. It would have just been a uh, huge momentum. And you know what really started all off for TTS that fight was the, the brilliant counter initiation. Raxus jumped in, the follow-up was expected to happen, but Jeff Inns, you know, fast as lightning jumped in there, got a major counter initiation off, and I thought was gonna set the fight for TTS, no questions asked. Yeah, I mean, it very likely could have, and you could even say should have. I I hundred percent you nailed it with with Heimer. Great guy, we love him, we give him plenty of praise, and we do with obviously a lot of these top players, most pretty much all of them, but you, you do have to point out those mistakes, and that was an evident mistake back-to-back. -back. Not stunning Gravekeeper at the bottom lane, and then right there, not using the Shrunken Head against all these cooldowns or, or crowd control items here from the Legion side. Meanwhile, speaking of Gravekeeper, drops Aluna once again at the top side. Nomad's chasing, but Gravekeeper has that portal key up in five seconds. Can he get it off in time? I don't think he will. Two seconds. No, he will not. So now Gravekeeper's in a lot of trouble, actually. Here comes Hammerstorm. And Gravekeeper will end up falling. Support trying to get there. They run into Keeper of the Force, though. In the meantime, Moraxis initiates. Ratchetag also there. And down goes Keeper. So ultimately a two-for-one exchange right there in favor of Trademark. But the, the lead is continuing to grow slightly more in the favor of Trademark. Yeah, uh, the Keeper, I mean, the Luna kill obviously doesn't matter at that point. Trading the Grave Keeper for it was awesome. Unfortunately, Jeff and Steve get caught bottom lane. Mm -hmm. uh, TDM is keeping the pressure up. I feel like that happens all the time, though. Whenever one team gets a kill, it seems like people lose focus on the other side of the map, and there's always like a, a counter kill or a chain reaction that happens. Yeah. I don't know why, it just happens all the time, man. Yeah. Uh, whoa, uh, we see right here, Hammerstorm jumping in. How's that Elder Parasite again? No Shrunken Head Use, though. No Shrunken Head Use. He's going to be locked down. He'll end up falling. Morax is going to be jumped right here. Keeper the Force coming in. No buyback from Hammerstorm, by the way, but they still have plenty of damage with that Nomad. Morax will fall. Boundite drops on the ground. Parasite and Wretched Act falling back. Energizer used, though, and I think they are going to make their escape. So, ugh. Use Shrunken. <laughs> They're going for the, 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 the Congorb attempt? Maybe. I mean, they can. They have... They have three. Okay, Gravekeeper's up. Never mind. I, I saw the Gravekeeper dead. Yeah. I wouldn't. I don't think they'll go for it. I don't think they'll go no, for especially it. Especially with Hammerstorm down. I mean, that's yeah. so much of your DPS right nah, there. No, no, no. I saw the Gravekeeper dead for a sec. I didn't quite catch the amount of seconds left. I mean, he's up right now. I wouldn't really risk it. Mm -hmm. He's got to be a lot more liberal with that shrunken head use, man. Even, you know, even if he wastes a second of it, it still has. What? This is 10 second duration, man. Wait, what? Well, on who? No, that can't be. Okay, eight seconds. Eight I was gonna seconds, say I saw. Yeah. I highlighted it. When you actually highlight that shrunken head when it's in the uh, mini inventory to the side of their yeah, picture, yeah, it doesn't show. Yeah, doesn't show you. But actually, on eight seconds. It's still a lot of time to work with. He needs to be a lot more liberal with it. Using it even like right before he PKs. You know, just a millisecond before. You know, roll the fingers, click it, and then just PK right on in. Yeah. 
You, 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 you'd hope it's anything, it's a case of adapting here. I mean, it's one thing, you know, not to maybe expect it the first time, but you have to know by now. I mean, you have to know to use that as you're jumping in. Because you're facing arguably the best team out there right now in Trademark Esports. They're going to be on the ball with their cooldowns. They're going to be on the ball with those sheep sticks, those hell flowers, the crowd controls. That's the reason why you got well, the shrunken heads. Did we mention the sheep stick here on Parasite, by the way? We have not, but holy crap. That is, uh, sheep that stick is, on Parasite. That is, he is immensely farmed as well. Yeah. Well, he is uh, continuing to farm in the Hellborn jungle for the time being. So, now, you know, with all this negativity, unfortunately, for TTE Sports and mistakes even, but uh, they still definitely in the game. I mean, Hammerstorm, he is still hitting very hard, and they're going to jump Gravekeeper. Right? Look at the damage output. He hits like a freaking truck, man. I mean, <laughs> he is hitting very hard. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, we're, we're well aware of that. Just, uh. Damn, well, in that case, obviously, he didn't need the, uh, he did not need the Shrunken Head there, and yeah. part of that because he actually stunned this time when picking off the Gravekeeper. Uh, very good job, and yeah, that actually puts them in a pretty decent spot. Mm -hmm. That's actually, ooh, that's a big item. Yep. Shrunken Head on Nomad there. That is huge, so. More, uh, versatility there coming out from this team, and again, as much damage as Hammerstorm is doing, you gotta respect Nomad's damage, too. He's, he's doing plenty himself. They're going to take squishy. the con, um, and I'm looking at Zai, he cannot buy back. They yeah. they definitely shouldn't fight this. The best they can do is split push that top lane up. If they were to fight this right now, they pretty much have all their major cooldowns. No hammers from ulti, but it's still a 5v4 fight. New Shrunken Head picked up, as you mentioned, by Nomad. Yeah. This is uh, token on hammer or Nomad here? On to Nomad. Nomad? Okay. Probably get rid of the power supply here. Yep, sells right there. Uh, is gonna pick up the token of lives. Yeah, the counter push, the double damage on Wretched at the top lane, but she quickly ports away as soon as Conquer falls. Again, TDM was, so was definitely aware of something up there, but as you were stating, really kind of even be silly to do that in trademark agreed, especially with the Gravekeeper dead. So he's resurrected now, but uh, a lot of damage done there. And TTE Esports definitely picking up some momentum once again uh, with those kills. So despite the stats lead staying in favor of trademark Esports, 7,700 goals, 6,600 experience. You have a very dangerous, hard-hitting Hammerstorm over here, and Nomad. Plenty of physical damage coming out on the Cellborn side. Again, still, further for the most part, I mean, these are squishy heroes here. You have Gravekeeper, right. 8.9 oh. armor, well, 6 even armor hag. Even before the token, I would have actually given the team fight advantage if they weren't able to get the proper jump in favor of TTS, all depending on Jeppins. What yeah. they need to do on TDM is make sure that at least one character, one player on their team, uh, maybe has vision of the Keeper, but Keeper's going to be playing back invis and waiting to blink in at the perfect moment, so they just have to be really careful, maybe a Bound Eye. If they can disrupt his ultimate, his counter set, that gives them a very good chance to make things happen in this fight, but now that they have the token on Nomad, that is just extra insurance. It's mm -hmm. going to be hard, and them being so squishy, not having shrunken heads of their own yet, it... Oh, actually, Wretched Hag, speak of the devil, she does have her shrunken head. Yep, she just got enough gold for it. Gravekeeper is coming up, so... By the time they fight, uh, I think those are going to be coming up here mm -hmm. for the Legion side, which will obviously right. be huge. But yeah, I, I really uh, kind of sit going what you're saying. It seems like those those team stats a little bit deceptive. I, I still feel like TT Esports most certainly has some good chance here of uh, of winning this game. It definitely is going to come down to just getting that pick, you know, going into those get, getting those initiations, using your shrunken head as you jump into team fights, <laughs> and actually. Uh, you know, working off of that is again, we, we know, as I was kind of going over there, I mean, so yeah, Shrunken Heads are being picked up, but there's plenty of physical damage between Hammers and Nomad. The armor here on the Sleet inside as a whole is pretty damn low, other than really maybe that Moraxis, of course, but yeah, it is very, very low on everyone else around him, so not a whole lot of mitigation coming out there in the physical damage sense. What is, is that Nomad? Yeah, okay, he's standing still, it looked weird. Uh, Token Alive still has four, over four and a half minutes on it, so of course plenty of time tower. here um, for that token. The top tower, that was the first tower finally going down. Yeah, that's only the third tower kill so far for TD Esports, actually. That's pretty significant, too. Yeah, so there's a lot of gold to be made up here. Just It's a sign of confidence, though, that they're able to get out here and now start rolling down the rest of these outer towers, able to take a little bit more control back of the map. I'm sure they're feeling pretty good right now. Still, Keeper of the Forest close to his Restoration Stone. Uh, they probably don't want to force anything just yet. Yeah. Nomad, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he maybe saves up for that Genjiro here. Is that something you would, you'd see? Uh, it, it's something I could see. I mean, it's just more anti-kiting potential, and given the fact that they are pretty squishy, maybe he feels like he can do enough there. Otherwise, you could see a Shield Breaker maybe for damage, but mm -hmm. Genjiro would hit Lom to hit really, really hard. 
2,400 gold saved up on Tralfendor, playing that Nomad, so we'll see. 23 more hundred gold saved up on Hammerstorm, and you would think next to line for him is definitely that Demonic Breastplate now, sitting on the items he has, so. Yeah, looks like, yeah, that. there's a Shield Breaker. Okay. Yeah, level one Shield Breaker just purchased. Yeah, but they want to disable, and they have, you know, they have Bound Eye and other True Psych, and Juro, a little bit just redundant for him right now. He doesn't want to re-invis because the utility that's sort of already done. The anti-cutting is nice, but just looking for the burst damage. In combination with that Bulwark, you mentioned they have a low armor team here on Legion. Mm -hmm. Bulwark, Shield Breaker, that's the answer. Yeah. Fight's brewing, man. Fight is definitely brewing here at the top lane. Both teams are in the vicinity. Obviously, TDM somewhat looking to push, but not really. You got the, the cacti here in the foreground from Keeper of the Forest. He's just sending him out, doing the scouting, as you would expect. Uh, Wild Hunter taken over by Parasite right here. He's going to be spotted, though, so he won't be able to be too sneaky with that, and in the end, we'll fall back. Uh, both teams do have a bound eye with that said. Aluna has one on the Hellborn side. You got more access, of course, with that on the Legion side, so the whole stealth presence here a little bit uh, affected. Torture using that Energizer that he's had now for a little bit, trying to energize the team, but not going to chase down TDM, and... They fall back to farm. So trademark esports. I mean, you can tell they're they're timid. Is is there is there an obvious item that they need to wait for? I guess if anything, you know, of course that there's a token of life. I guess that makes sense. Well, yeah, I mentioned I that. mentioned Bricky. It was a shrunken heads like that they needed to wait for. Besides that, they're just waiting on the token. Okay, I was gonna say. So they have those. So yeah, now it's really the token. Yeah, yeah. That you're going for at this point. Which obviously, if you're TD esports, on the other hand, you're the ones that are want to you now take advantage of that token here. So. They are going to start their push now. There's about two and a half minutes. Uh, actually, no, only about two minutes now. So they, they are definitely losing on time here. And Torture is porting away. So, okay, they're, they're actually going to go to the bottom lane. Obviously, TDM is all down here for the most part. Demonic Breastplate just finished, by the way. Wretched Ag. Oh, she blinked onto the ledge right there. Gets kind of caught. Torture chasing. But at what cost right here? Torture now dropping very quickly. She will end up falling. Nomad running away, away getting as a token of life. But that'll be the damage done, so Torture got way too greedy there. And did not pay off, but it ain't over just yet. Hammerstorm, there goes Keeper the Force jumping in. There's Hammerstorm, there's the Shrunken Head. And look at the damage from Hammerstorm coming out. Cheese Helmet hitting like a boss. The Zombie Apocalypse is down. Parasite go for the kill. He'll end up barely staying alive in the background. And Hammerstorm gets the kill on Wretched Hack, though. They do take out uh, Parasite up there. Fitzgay, the sole survivor for Trademark Esports in two seconds, one second. You're dead good, yeah. sir. The Frosty the Snowman ain't a snowman no longer. Patrick coming out for Cheese Helmet and TTE That's Sports. That's the fight they were looking for. Yeah, I mean, they were able to get their shrunken heads off in time. The Keeper locking them down. It did not really matter. Hammerstorm was like three, four hitting people left and right. Uh, just As you said before, they're just too damn squishy to deal with this right now. Yeah. Barbed armor seemed like they'd be very useful here on the Legion side <laughs> at this time. <laughs> Maybe, but, you know, it's not like they're exactly huge. Like, I mean, they're not doing too bad. Maybe the useful, Lord but... Takes down a Legion yeah. tower. Well, again, I, I mean, the stats still say favor TDM, but with That's... the way that last fight went, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the stats are only a little part of the story here. I mean, compositionally, you have to look. There's, they are... Uh, very, very, very squishy against the team. This is a Shield Breaker 3 now going to be finished on Nomad. Mm -hmm. uh, if he so jump sure he will. And yeah. That, that, <laughs> he thought they were doing a lot of damage before, man. Demonic Breastplate, Shield Breaker 3, even more minus armor coming out, even more attack speed coming out for this Hammer Storm. Yeah. It's getting scary, so. And Restoration Stone for the Keeper of the Forest. On, yep. Keeper of the Forest on the Restal Stone. Yeah, it's scary all across the board now, really, for the Hellborn team. And, and again, that started with Moravis getting ballsy there. He ended up getting picked off. The bait, though, ended up working big time for uh, TT Esports' favor now. Big Porta, or a big Porta key pickup here on Parasite. Obviously, that would help. And I think that that's kind of been the trend here. We have constantly been seeing TT Esports. Jeppins, he's kind of been a shining star. I mean, he's had some great root initiations. you got to give him a lot of credit. Um, but it seems like as a whole, TT Esports, they're the ones getting the jump as this game has progressed on. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure, they did have those mistakes, especially with Heimer, where he wasn't using the Shrunken Head and they eventually got turned on. But when he gets the Shrunken Head off, especially with the jump that, that they're getting, I mean, that's the big deal right now. But Paris, like getting that portal key, you know, that could definitely help a little bit here now for TDM. Right. Well, the thing is, initiation, Keeper of the Forest, especially with a quick player like Jeppins, makes it really easy. Yeah. Uh, it's not really like you have to choose a target, you know, whatever. He just jumps in, giant AoE root, there you go. Uh, I was going to say, did you notice what TTS tried to pull, though, at the start of that fight? Uh, Tralfador, I'm not sure if this was intentional, but it seemed like he actually showed himself without a teleport in the top lane. I don't know if anyone else did this. And then the courier came in with the TP. He dropped his, I think it was his helm, 
started teleporting to bottom and then used the courier to place the item back onto him. So yeah. pulling a little bit of mind games there, which maybe led to a little bit of TDM being caught off guard. I have seen him do that before. Uh, so I, I want to say that you know, was definitely on purpose. And, and again, when, when you're at this level, it's obviously you're in that kind of mindset of, well, what would they be thinking here? A, a smart player at Trademark Esports, all smart players would be saying, he doesn't have a TP top, let's take advantage of that. And so as you know, in that case, Dralph Midor being the player that made the, made the response there, why not uh, just uh, be a little play the mind games as you're putting it, and don't show the homecoming stone and catch them off guard? And no doubt that might have that might have been effective and worked out right there. Speaking of Nomad, holy crap, he's getting ballsy. Hold it, a little bit too ballsy apparently. In comes Rune, in comes Amazon. Nomad will fall right off the bat though. You do see Wretched Egg dropping pretty damn quickly. Wretched Egg will fall. We do see Liv trying to get away. Liv will fall in the process. So despite Nomad dying, who did buy back by the way, Hammerstorm stun on a parasite off to the side right here. He is still on the run. A great leech coming out. He'll be fine for now. Has that portal key up. He's going to go for the haste and He'll pick it up, portal key away, and he gets stuck actually. So... <laughs> Uh, he's going to take over the Minotaur, though, and he'll be fine. But damage done by TT Esports. That's what matters. Even with Nomad getting ballsy and dying there, it didn't matter. Yeah. Well, and the buyback is used, and he's back with the team going for the base push now. Going to force some buybacks. Yeah. If they, yeah, they can only actually bust one out on Hag, though. Marax is still a little bit shy. I noticed right there, Wretched Hag made it made a little bit of a mistake. Again, it's it, it's kind of in that dire situation. Well, not, I don't even. It's not really a mistake, but basically what he did, he used the shrunken head. I'm guessing maybe to get out of the root or whatever, because obviously after the initiate for Nomad and went in the keeper. But because he used the shrunken head, you can't use the void talisman. And so Hammerstorm's sitting there just beating on him, and I'm sure he wanted to use it, but. He well, couldn't use it, so. Yeah, a lot because the res the Restoration Stone proccing that double root on the team, he just yeah. got heat. Oh, know, that, that's true, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So caught off guard by that more yeah. than anything. That makes sense. So, again, TT Esports, they actually do finally pull ahead now in the team stats, but it does seem like they've they've been ahead now for the last 15 minutes or so uh, in this game. These last couple of team fights have no doubt gone in favor. Of, uh, of TT Esports here. Oh so. my, oh my, What's look up? at Heimer's gold. 5,000 shards. Rift shards. Yeah, I mean, why not? He's got that that slot there. He might go post haste first, just to be safe. But. Uh, maybe, I don't expect it. Well, we'll see. see. Yes, of the 5,000 gold. He's sitting on the steam boot still. Um, he has choices. He could easily go the Rift shards, I think, at least two, if not three levels here. Oh, 26, 25. Yeah, he can go at least two, uh, three levels, actually. Yeah. But, nope, still saving it up. I mean, he can pretty much fully upgrade it in just a second. So yeah. It's... He's going to go for Congo right here at Lowell, at least in the vicinity. The Hellborn team is heading over. So is Trademark, though. Both teams are there. Yeah, with the Team 5 Bruin, he says it might as well save that goal for buyback opportunity if necessary. You know, smart choice there. Right. Hammer. Oh, there we go. Morax is going to jump on a Hammerstorm. Here's the first damage coming out. Hellfire is going to be applied. He's going to be talented for their Keeper Room coming out, though. Hammerstorm will barely die in the end, but he has that buyback. In the meantime, Nomad tearing up base. Torture with the ulti activated and everything else. Morax is on the run. Hammerstorm did buy back. The zombie apocalypse going nom nom nom. Takes out a Luna right there. Torture now dropping low. But here comes Daddy with Hammerstorm. The Void Talos is going to be used on uh, Wretched Hag. It ain't going to matter though. Again, the damage output is just way too intense in the physical presence here between Nomad and Hammerstorm. So again, a great jump from Trademark. Killing Hammerstorm. Didn't pay off though in the end. The buyback happened. And the team support was more than enough. And now they're going to go for the Ninja on Conger, which I think they're very likely going to do here. Yeah, I thought that was pretty much an ideal circumstance spike coming out from TDM. They got the jump on the Hammerstorm. Uh, Wretched Hag making excellent use of that Void Talisman. Uh, still not enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the end. Finally able to <laughs> take advantage of that. But didn't matter. I mean, Hammerstorm is uh, here with Nomad, of course. They're just dropping Conger very quickly. He, he bought some. Oh no, he bought back. Duh. I'm like sitting here. Oh, he's awesome goal. But yeah, that makes sense. Uh, he's level 23 down. on top of that. Nomad's actually the higher level. Nomad's level 24, by the way. Uh, right yes. now, the highest level in the game. So, able to get yeah, ahead there. Taken over. Now we might see again Juro. Yeah, I think they're just, just now. once again. Yeah, the invis is nice, but it's more for that slow, mm -hmm. uh, the anti kite potential. That's what I'm sort of expecting here. Yeah, he has the token alive, so doesn't need to worry about buyback, at least right now. Gravekeeper needs to be careful. Zai is going to portal key very oh, shortly oh. right there. Oh, that was close. <laughs> he didn't really go much of a portal key, but he just wanted to get a little bit deeper into the woods and be safe. So 
He's fine. Uh, by the way, you know, kind of uh, Moravius here. How about Moravius? I saw, I saw especially that last fight on Torture. He's doing tons of damage himself. I mean, he has that shrunken head. He's been the secondary support in this game. But right now on the damage chart, you just look at that. He's actually uh, third in the game overall, second on his team. He's, he's no doubt having a presence too. Oh yeah, just the immense AoE combined with lockdown from Keeper. Uh, no surprise there. But yeah, you, you gotta look at that. 13% damage, and he's playing secondary support. He's pretty much fourth in line for farm here in this game. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, if they answer to the torture, how are they going to answer to this big bad hammer storm in the Nomad? Exactly. So it's... he gets a... Trademark has a lot of questions to answer <laughs> against CT Esports here in this game. I mean, it's, it's just difficult all across the board. And, and again, they, they kind of have been playing a little bit from behind, it definitely seems like. The Gajiro finished on Tralfmador, by the way, playing that Nomad. Now, just a quick reminder, this is game number one here in the Spessit at three, so just to keep that in mind. But uh, no doubt TT Esports feeling pretty good with where they're at. Not that it's over just yet, because it definitely is not. Um, but, you know, these teams competing to not only move on to the finals tomorrow to play the winner of the Complexity Q Squad series, but to, to also join Stay Green in Thailand, representing North America and Europe over there, competing for the $60,000 prize pool. So uh, definitely a lot, a lot, a lot. This is on the line as we keep stressing. <laughs> well, what a story would that be, though, to see TTS come yeah. out of nowhere and wind up taking this qualifier. It would I mean, be. Well, many they're, they're setting yeah. a strong statement right here. I mean, we've talked about them before. They have a lot of potential as a team, especially now with Tralfmador joining their ranks and some of the best players as well on the scene. They seem to sort of every, something to put everything together. Mm -hmm. They're looking very, very strong. Like I said, it's if anything, I think just the morale's at its highest right now for TD Esports. Again, Tralf <laughs> Fedor, he's obviously, we talked about that. He had his struggles with OTP, with 007. He just didn't seem like it was fitting at all. Uh, but TT Esports, you could just tell the vibe was different. He was very excited to be joining the team. Uh, he, he's known, obviously, all these players even for the longest time. He's respected them. and. And I think that definitely plays a large role as well. And this also just kind of more, the, more of a, I don't want to say laid back, because obviously they, they do take these events seriously, I'm sure. But uh, they're, they're not as, you know, they're not training as hard as, as the other teams out there. That's just simply, that, that's fact for right. sure. But still, Ooh, it's, know, it's working. You know, that is smart. It was the other thing I was thinking of outside of Rift Shards. But the, the Behemoth's are picked up by Hammerstorm. He already does plenty of damage. True. He's already tearing right through these heroes. Uh, the Behemoth's Heart, yeah, it'll increase his damage a bit, especially with that <laughs> ultimate, but just make sure that when they jump him, they can't really burst him down to low enough HP where he can't really respond anymore. Now if they were to jump him, they need to invest everything, or yeah. else they guaranteed are just going to get, you know, smashed right on back. And if they do that, then Nomad's going to run Train on him. So Behemoth's Heart, definitely the smarter pickup. Uh, over the rip shards while the, the crit numbers would have been flashy. I was going to say, yeah, but I want to see big numbers, Emperor. I don't care about what's the smarter pickup. I want to <laughs> see big numbers, damn it. Yeah, I know, but alas, here we are. Get Juro, uh, I don't know if we actually mentioned Yeah, he said that. For... Okay. He, we, wow. he said he was about to pick it off, but yeah, he does have it now. Uh, Th this is this very is... likely a game finishing push right here. Yeah. Unless uh, TDM can somehow hold this off. Nomad, of course, with that token alive for just under three minutes now. Plenty of time to work with that. Pending some, uh, again, some just amazing play for TDM and definitely a team that can put that out. So we'll see. Sheep sticking to going to Nomad right there, but a good tablet uh -oh. support coming out. And just in case, goes right back in. There's a, oh, we actually oh. edge counters right there on the lead. Trying to catch Parasite off guard. But uh, not even close, unfortunately. So, but again, it's at level three. It's only a thirty-second cooldown. So by the next push, next team, next time a jump happens, he could definitely have it up. So, yeah, that was a really smart play, though. I mean, if he was to catch someone off guard there, that could have been huge. Yeah. The there we go. Tower easily tower. falls. The Gravekeeper now porting back in. Maybe this is the jump chance they're looking for. There we go. Morax in the background. Goes on a Hammerstorm. There's a sheep sack. They're going all out. Keep the force going to root. The bat plus. Hammerstorm will fall in the background. However, the second root comes out. Nomad still doing plenty of damage here with that physical presence. The edge counter still not used, actually. He still has it up. Down goes Morax. It's a Mirage stock on a great people right there. Chasing down. TDM is holding their ground for now. Aluna's in a little bit of trouble, but now Gravekeeper dropping to that Nomad. Physical damage. He still has a token of life, by the way. Mirage Strike. No, the portal key going to be used. And I believe, yes, he will get away in time. Nomad going down for Parasite. Parasite dropping low. There's the sheep on a Nomad, though. He's going to go down. Again, he has the token, so he's going to resurrect. No edge counter just yet. He actually picks up the bound eye right there, which is on the ground. Hammerstorm did buy back and is now joining Nomad. But it's just them two, so... Probably not uh, going to continue here. 
A little curious about the Hammerstorm right. buyback, actually. Yeah, that was huge, and we saw there they were actually able to jump on the Hammerstorm and prevent him from activating his ulti or doing anything that fight. So now more than ever, they need to get that Behemoth's heart up. Uh, that that <laughs> that was he has no buyback, man. You said it yourself. He has no buyback. Yeah. All of a sudden, TDM has a window to win this game again. That's it. That and that that goes back to uh, why 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 did you buy back there? I mean, it's not like TDM was pushing back. It's not like they were regrouping to set up a team. I mean, you could say maybe because of the buyback that ultimately kept them from doing so. Maybe he would have eventually, but. Usually you just at least, at the very least, wait, they're going to jump Parasite in the middle of it, Moraxis responds, Shrunkenet goes up, do you chase us the question? Of course you do! When you're Hammerstorm with that brute strength up, he just tears Parasite a new one. And they do get the pickoff kill, so that did pay off right there. Right, Parasite can buy back, brute strength is down for the moment, so they can't get too cocky. Hellflower finished by Keeper of the Forest, and, you know, Hellflower is great on its own. What's even better is a restored Hellflower. Two Hellflowers in one right wow. there. Wow. Holy crap. We never get to that moment. I don't know if we've ever seen that combo. That's a good point, though. Yeah, that... that <laughs> talk about insane initiation. That's... Yeah. He's got the whole package right there. Pretty much the only thing better uh, would be a shrunken head at this point, just so they can't interrupt it. But, that you know, we'll see if the game gets that late. It also comes down to just remembering that, you know, with all everything, obviously the root and the restoration is the biggest thing to remember, but you throw the health flower out He's first, you root, He's and then you it. just restore. Yeah, of course. Jeffins is a much better player than Execution-wise, I honestly give praise to Jeffins as being one of the strongest players on the scene. Right he does some silly things sometimes, but, I mean, he cannot... Go again. Oh, Hammerstorm jumped in first! He's going to get the first jump. Gravekeeper absolutely melts. He does buy back, though, again. So that is happening. Hammerstorm now being locked down. Hammerstorm will fall again. No buyback edge count in the meantime. Nomad's in no man's land. Nomad will fall, and Trademark Esports holds them off at the base. And now they're pushing back. Torture will be able to point out in time. Keep the force on the run. He did use this root restoration zone, of course, not off cooldown yet, though. He's going to be tabulated for it. Aluna and Keeper are completely on the run here. Portal Key is going to come up, however, and I think they will be fine. Aluna, maybe not so much. She doesn't even have a TP, actually, so <laughs> she's going to have to just hide there. He's being sneaky. I think he's going to find his way out here. Well, Damn, what a turnaround. Just the positioning coming out. Yep. Yeah, he got the jump off, but did, did Hammerstorm not get his shrunken head off again? Uh, I think he did, but it's five seconds now. Did he? It's, okay, it's, it's only five, five seconds. seconds. So. Okay, I think I thought he did too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pretty was, sure he did. He did get it off, and then the buyback happened. Yeah, the buyback right. just yeah, the buyback threw them off guard. They dropped Gravekeeper immediately, but uh, so it definitely was a solid initiation. But the buyback caught yeah. them. And, okay, he did. He did get it off. All yeah. Right. Uh, that being said, yeah, go, obviously though. he has no buyback now. They're pushing the top lane. Nomad buys back, so maybe that's going to be enough of a threat right here. Uh, Aluna's still not back, though, remember. Keeper of the Forest does jump in. He does have double root. Oh, uh, he actually wrestled right there to use the first root. Down goes Gravekeeper in the meantime. Parasite being chased down. Nice Quake stun coming out from Araxis. Hammer's running up in five seconds. Bathlass going to be used right there. But at this point, it's also a lot of its touch, of course. So uh, the Helmet team more than fine. Power throw actually hitting right there. But TDM falls back. So they don't get a Rax. Neither team still has a Rax, by the way. We're now 62 minutes into this game. Neither team has even killed a melee rax at this point. That's actually pretty rare <laughs> to be this late and not even have one rax down for either team. Right, but more importantly, you're looking at all of a sudden now TTS is a whole new problem to answer when they push. They have no buyback on Nomad, no yeah. buyback on Hammerstorm. When they're going into that base, if TDM can mount a successful push, uh, a counter push, I should say, a uh, defense, and then even players die, they can buy back, win that fight, they can go straight for the base at that point. Mm -hmm. Then, oh man, the buybacks in a game like this is, of course, the, the biggest key at this point. Nomad and Hammerstorm out as you're stressing, so if you kill one of those two, especially both, you're in a very good spot now for TDM. That's definitely what they're looking at, and that's where you say, if, honestly, for TD Esports here, I don't know about going in just yet. Wait for that Congor, maybe. You are the Hellborn yeah. team. You, you could definitely team fight here against TDM, so... I, think I, I don't think they here. want to lose pressure here. They don't want to have the map all of a sudden pushed onto their side, though. True. So they keep they keep applying the pressure. It'll buy them room to take Congor really fast when it does spawn. Meanwhile, we're talking about Congor. Look who just came up. Oh, there you go. Waiting for the friend, and sure enough, he appears. They got it. So into Congor. Look at how fast Congor falls. Holy crap. Even if TDM just reacted right now, it, 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 they would be way too late. I mean, that is just an insanely quick Congor kill coming out. Congor so, goes down. there's the token alive. And bananas, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Only on black. That was the third Congor kill. Aluna actually grabbing the bananas in favor of Torture. Torture just needing to keep that. I don't know. I think he should 
take it on. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or, well, uh, what maybe would he? I guess the mystic vestments he can get rid yeah, of. Yeah, maybe shrunken, he needs but... to survive. It's. In, eh, I don't know. Well, he's got a shrunken head. Maybe they. I think yeah. it might be one of those cases. Luna might not even use it. She might just save it to give to somebody else. Yeah, as they come on. back up. Sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so as we talked about, now they got the token. Now it's just, you know, pushing out the lanes here, waiting for maybe about three or four minutes or so on the token. And then uh, once again, trying to trying to finish this game. But I say that, it's honestly, though, this is still, this is easily just anyone's game. I, TDM showed that right there at the bottom lane. And if anything, TDM has their, their favors in the sense of the buybacks. It was going back to that. How they still all have at least one buyback, and you got Hammerstorm and Nomad, the, the two key heroes, of course, here on the Hellborn team, completely out of buyback. So, uh, and actually, uh oh, they need to be careful down the bottom. It's a five versus four right now. Nomad is not with them. He has post haste, man. He has post haste. Okay, does that post haste? Hammerstorm's gonna be dropped right there. There's a storm spirit coming out. Nomad is porting in. I'm guessing not just yet. Okay, yes, he is porting in. He's gonna be going to the party. Keep the force spirit coming out. Hammerstorm beating on a parasite. There's the zombie apocalypse. Nom nom nom. Keep the force in the background. Somehow stayed alive. Down goes Parasite though. Down goes Moraxis. The chase is on. TT Esports. The bait is successful right there. Gravekeeper, a great portal key in the process. Will stay alive. Easy. But another pick off in the background actually happening as they do finish off. I think that was Glacius right there. So there was already a buyback on my nuts right there. Uh, so he is now completely out of buybacks. Limp and Fitzke cannot buy back though. So this is a true five versus three right here. These made the racks. Finally, we're going to see some racks fall at 65 and a half minutes into this game. I, I gotta give credit to two destroyed. things that I, I cannot give enough credit to Leon Black and how he tableted back his teammate. Yeah. Uh, it was the hammer storm. Just got him just out of range of the follow up coming out from TDM. Saved his life, allowed him enough time to get his shrunken head off, and really turned that fight around. Also, they did sneak the banners onto the Keeper of the Forest there, I'm pretty sure. I saw his life just yeah. go way up in the middle of that. That was probably, yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay. Uh, look at this though. Look at what TD Esports is doing. They don't even care about the range. They're just going for every single melee racks. They go over the top tower. Limp and Fitzgay are still down for another 20 seconds. Zai just trying to kind of look at Zai. He actually goes to the well basically to pour back. Parasite jumps in right here on a torture, but Parasite is going to fall again. He knows they're just so desperate right now. But I think TT Esports is on the verge of winning. Casibo comes out. There's the GG well plays. TT Esports will take game number one here in this best set of three. What an epic game to get things kicked off. <laughs> Man, obviously we got started late uh, with uh, waiting on one of the players and everything, but was it worth the wait? Let me tell you, what an insane game number one, Emperor. That, that was one of the be uh, best back and forth games I've seen in a while. Yeah. Like At the end there, I had no idea who was going to win. I think the Congo kill really did help uh, salvage the game for TTS, but as we saw there, it wasn't anyone's favor. They tried to push into the base twice, got totally countered by TDM. They tried to fight outside the base, and TTS was ready. Mm -hmm. uh, very good pickup, too, by Trout getting that post haste. Yeah. Man, that was, uh, I, I mean, I think we kind of explained it all throughout. I mean, talk about, again, you look back earlier on in the game. Heimer had those moments where his, like, uh, AKG cell, but of course, in Hammerstorm, didn't use the stun against Gravekeeper. Well, it should have been a free kill. Didn't use a shrunken head jumping in into that fight in the mid game. But then all of a sudden, uh, you know, as the game progressed on, started to use the shrunken heads. The team was definitely coming together. Trademark Esports, a lot of credit to them. I mean, it seemed like they were down for, for quite a bit there at the end. They held strong, especially at their base. Great job by them, but TT Esports just too strong. Got the Congo advantage in their favor, and that definitely paid dividends as well, I'm sure. So, But again, it is just game number one. No doubt Trademark can come back, force that third game. Would not be surprised in the very least. Again, we have a series ahead of us. So we are going to go into a short break right here, ladies and gentlemen. Time to recoup. But we'll be coming back at you very shortly here. Game number two, TT Esports, Trademark Esports. Stay tuned.